Good morning, everyone. Happy to have everyone here this morning. Another wonderful morning to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's start off with our announcements. Do we have any announcements this morning that needs to be brought forth? Okay. Well, oh. That's okay. August 1st, we're going to have a paint party at the Parsonage. So we're going to, uh, we got about three rooms that we need to have painted upstairs. So we're going to start about 9 o'clock, uh, August 1st, Saturday. So mark your calendars. We'll have all your supplies there. And uh, all we got to do is paint. So uh, we realize that we got some that we need to touch up and get painted correctly. Okay, I'll, I'll admit, I tried to patch paint. It was late in the evening. No, we only had one day. And then Brian and Jen move in. So I thought, well, I'll stop and check in on them on the first day they were there. And I went upstairs and I said, oh, <laughs> what happened? So it looks kind of bad. So we're going to repaint. So anyway, my mistake, but we need help August 1st. All right. And also I wanted to announce there's a bunch of dishes the women for food and stuff that was taken is in the kitchen. So if you would pick up your dishes before something happens to them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have anything this morning? I have a list. Pastor Brian, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll stay seated so I don't block the... Oh, you want me to go ahead and stand? Oh, perfect. Um, the next thing that we wanted to announce is that there's the Vespers service and the Gospel Sing tonight at the Park County Fairgrounds at 7 o'clock. Um, I know some of you have been a part of that in the past. Jen and I are planning to be there, and ooh, and uh, it's, it's a good thing for us, I think, to be a part of here as a church. Um, if you don't know, we're a part of a, a ministerial association here in town of a bunch of churches that work together, and a lot of the funds... Um, go through our church to help different people here in our community in a time of need. And this, this service tonight at the fair is a main fundraising time um, for that fund that those churches use. So we will be there at the fairgrounds. Hopefully we'll look forward to seeing some of you as well. The second announcement that I had um, is that we have added a sign-up sheet at the back of the church for the children for acolytes. So just like we do for altar flowers and for scripture reading, there, also, there will also be a sign-up sheet back there um, every week for acolytes so we can be a little more organized and prepared um, in that regard. And while we're talking about the kids, we have decided that we're going to take four weeks off from Children's Church. I will still be doing, we'll still be doing children's chat here, but the kids will stay with us for the next four weeks, for the next month here in the sanctuary during worship. And the reason for that is that we're going to be able to give a little bit of a break um, to Tony. And while I'm saying that, why don't we also just thank Tony for, for everything he's done with the kids. It's been a blessing, I know, um, to have that for the kids every week, and we're going to start that up again. It'll be in four weeks. It'll be right when school starts as well, so we'll, we'll start that programming up again for the kids. Um, the fourth announcement that I have is you should see in your bulletins, there's a little piece of paper that our secretary, Aaron, put in there. Um, if, by any chance, we somehow have not ended up knowing your birthday. We need to have your birthday so we can celebrate it. But also, um, I thought, I really would like to know people's anniversaries as well. That's really important to me. And, and um, so there's a spot in there if you want to write that down as well and then get that to the church. And then the last thing that I have is you may have noticed several places around the church we've put the vision statement up. And Ross and I were talking this morning. Um, I hope that the vision statement was presented to you before I came here. I think I thought that da Pastor Dave had said that it was. Um, so I didn't come up with this vision statement. A team here at the church came up with this vision statement and um, finalized it, I think, at the end of May. But you'll see it a couple different places around the church because we need to start thinking about it and learning it. And, and so we can all be on the same page and know how we are, uh, what our vision here together is as a community. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Pastor Brian. Do we have any uh, other announcements? 
Last chance, any birthdays or anniversaries? Uh-oh, Shelly has a birthday? Happy birthday, Shelly. Maya has a birthday. Anybody else? Well, let's sing happy birthday to Maya and Shelly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Before we stand for our call to worship, I think I missed a birthday. Dorothy, how old? Or do you want to tell? 89. Happy birthday, Dorothy, okay? Sorry I missed you there. Now, if you would, let us stand for our call to worship, please. Great are you, Lord, and most worthy of praise. Your glory is beyond what our minds can grasp. We too will speak of the splendor of your majesty and meditate on your marvelous deeds. And if we could have the praise team come forward at this time. and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the 
day long. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasure, pasture, feed us. For our use thy fold prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Thou hast promised to receive us, Poor and sinful though we be, Thou hast mercy to relieve us, Grace to cleanse and power to thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, We will early turn to thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we will early turn to Thee. And if you would, let us pray our opening prayer together. Your name is wonderful, Lord, and worthy of all our praise. Help us to truly worship you this morning, not only with our lips, but with our hearts as well. Indeed, with our whole lives. We praise you because you loved us first, and your love never fails. By your spirit, lift our spirits, that we may go from this place refreshed and ready to serve you joyfully each and every day. We ask this in your wonderful name. Amen. And please be seated. Now is the time for the kids to come forward. And we're going to have a chat together. Good morning. I'm Brian. What's your name? Charles. Charles? Hi. What's your name? Chase. Chase? Hi. And what's your name? Isabel. I'm glad you all came up here this morning. This is my first time doing a children's chat. Did you know that? You have to let me know how I do, okay? <laughs> You're smiling at me. Yeah, you know. Okay. All right. So today we're talking about, together, all together, we're talking about Psalm 23, which is one of the most famous psalms, and it was written by David the king. This was the same David who took down Goliath with a slingshot and some smooth stones. Do you remember that story? The story of David and Goliath? You don't remember that story? I think you do. Remember Goliath was a giant and David was just a little shepherd's boy and he took a slingshot and because he prayed to God he was able to save his people? David was king, but he was also a musician and he liked to write poems and he liked to write songs. And so that's what psalms are. They're, they're like a song or a poem. Besides being a king and a musician, David was also a shepherd. Do you know what a shepherd is? What's a shepherd? Um, they take care of sheep. That's right, they take care of the sheep. And do you know that kings and shepherds have something in common? They both have to look after something. Kings have to look after people, and shepherds have to look after sheep. Both of them have a very important job. Okay, now I want you to imagine for a minute that you are sheep. Do you think you can do that? Okay. So you're covered with soft white wool, and you can make noises like a sheep. Do you know what kind of sheep, noise a sheep makes? Can you do it? Bah. Bah. Yeah. Can you do it? You don't want to do it? I bet you can. Do you want to do it? You don't want to do it? Okay, well, we'll do it. You want to do it again? Bah. 
All right, that's the noise that sheep make. Let me ask you another question. If you were a sheep and you wanted, would you want a good shepherd to take care of you or a bad shepherd to take care of you? A good shepherd, because a bad shepherd might let you get eaten by a wolf. And I don't want to be eaten by a wolf. Do you want to be eaten by a wolf? You do? I don't think you do. So what we want is a good shepherd, right? And in this, in this psalm, David is saying, God is a good shepherd. He's our good shepherd, and we're like sheep. He takes care of us. A good shepherd takes care because he loves each of his sheep. He knows each of their names. And we wouldn't be afraid to talk to a good shepherd that takes care of us and loves us. And we could be ourselves around him, right? We could talk to him. Well, David tells us that God is a good shepherd. So if we are like sheep and God is our shepherd, it's okay for us to be ourselves around him. And it's okay for us to talk to God because he loves us and we can trust him. How do we show God that we trust him? You're smiling. Do you have an idea? How do we show God that we trust him? We can pray. We can say in our prayers, God, I love you and I trust you, and I know that you're my good shepherd. We can also keep his commandments and listen to our parents and our grandparents. That's another way we can trust God. So I want you to remember today that God is like a shepherd and that he cares for you and he loves you. Okay? Okay, Isabel? I've got something for you, okay? And I want you to do a really good job with this. I've got a coloring page, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And this is like Jesus being a shepherd. And I want you to take some crayons, and then after service, I want you to show me your picture that you, that you colored. You can take it back to your seats with you. You can take a couple if you want a couple. Do you want more? Nope, you're good? Okay, what about you? All right, what about you? Okay, all right, thank you for talking with me. <laughs> you got them? Okay. Now we're going to enter into our time of prayer together. Who has a, a joy or concern they'd like to share this morning? Um, as most of you know, we've we've uh, we've talked about uh, Sheila Rohr uh, in the past. She is uh, still struggling. Has a pretty serious uh, surgery coming up. They're just waiting on a surgery date. Um, so I ask that we lift her up in our prayers because uh, it's. Um, the consequences of this surgery will either be very good or very bad. So we ask that you lift, lift her up in prayer. Okay. I have a dear friend who lives in Wisconsin. Her name is Joyce, and tomorrow she's facing a double mastectomy. Um, a friend of mine, Ashton, who I have been talking about on Facebook, um, died at 32 years old Thursday. Um, she finally gave up her battle and God took her home. So keep that family in prayer. And also pray for my family with all the deaths that we've had in our family. We have a joyful wedding to attend this next coming weekend. Um, hopefully we're leaving Thursday or Friday and she gets married on Saturday. And I know some of my cousins who are serving, mm. one is in Japan, he's coming home for this. And there's a few others that are coming too. So okay. uh, pray for safety for traveling. <laughs> okay. I'm having um, nasal surgery on Friday, so I'd like to have some prayers for good results on that. Okay. I have a miracle to report for this week. 
You may know Linda Rowe, the evangelist in the area. She mostly is known for ladies' ministries, but she also does evangelism um, three days a week out at Hogwalla Farm. And um, But recently, Satan really attacked her family tremendously. I reported, I think, last week or maybe the week before her husband fell he hurt his head really bad her husband of 83 had three fractured ribs I visited him this week and in a typical Illinois farmer style when I brought the squash says that's mighty neighborly of you and I thought well Ron's back to normal so he's getting along pretty well and an even bigger miracle is that her Linda's son Dwayne who is a um, family member but he's from Pennsylvania and doesn't know farming and such and he was burning brush and a big pile and didn't do it correctly anyway I reported last time he had third degree burns on his arms and his legs and the miracle is twofold one he walked from the other side of the silos way up to the house now that's pretty far away and I'm amazed that his flesh just didn't fall off his bones. But anyway, he was supposed to still be in the burn unit now, and he's just gotten out of the rehabilitation unit in Indianapolis. He was there about four days. I saw him Friday night at the camp meeting, which if you don't know is kind of like a little mini revival. It's just a Sunday service basically on a weekend <laughs> but anyway on a not evening but anyway it was out at the farm and he was in such good spirits he looked good he had a lot of bandages around him and uh, Laura his wonderful wife was going to drive him back to Pennsylvania Saturday morning but it is truly a miracle and and when Dwayne gets there he'll be in real rehabilitation but it's just a miracle and I praise God for that and I'd like to ask if I could get an amen for that in our little home church <laughs> amen, amen. I'm, it's a miracle yeah. and um, Linda Rowe the evangelist and uh, if you haven't met her yet you should uh, talk to Judy Goddard or myself or Dorothy um, or Imogene or Diana Lowe's all of us have met her and it, she's just fantastic um, yeah. now what has happened under the attack I mean I just keep thinking of Job through all this now what has happened is that um, her daughter was flying out and her daughter was going, these are all adult children, her daughter was flying out, she was going to ride home with Dwayne and his wife Laura in case there needed to be some more assistance. Well, the night before she was to fly she called mom and said, I'm not coming, my husband's sister just died. She was not sick, nothing in the world wrong, it was not suicide, she just died. So please keep the Holy Spirit and the Trinity, all of that, all of our pastors, please pray for all of these people and all of us, all of us saints in this room who are trying to spread the gospel because mm -hmm. Satan's on the move. And I just ask for prayers, but I give the joy for the miracle well, thank you. of all those wonderful things. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like uh, prayers for the Scott Patch family who he fell off the roof and passed away this week. The young man was a really fine gentleman and has three daughters and a wife surviving and several brothers, two brothers that I know. Thank you. Did you did you say Scott Patch? Yes, Patch. Okay. Huh? Patch. 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 Okay. Another praise. We prayed for Cassie Stevens. Huh? Um, she went in Monday and her numbers are starting to drop. So the leukemia is being fought. Um, she did not have to go back into the hospital. Um, so her blasts are starting to drop slowly, they said. Um, we saw her this week and she was in wonderful spirits, looked a lot better. So just prayer works if you just keep her up, lifted, so um, she can get that bone marrow transplant when her numbers get to zero. Okay. Praise works. Amen. Prayer works. Amen. Anybody else who wants to share this morning? Dave Lash has one up here, Greg. <laughs> this is not bad news. This is good news. You're all invited to over to my yard. This has been an abundant year for rain. But it's also been an abundant year for flowers. 
Now our flowers are unusual this year because when you look out over all that sea of color, you see all the reds, the yellows, the blues, the greens, the purples, all the different colors, it's fantastic. We've never seen it like this before. If you get a chance, please come over to our yard at 215 South Michigan Street, which is about two or three blocks from the church here to the south, and just walk through it. You don't have to have permission. You don't have to come at a particular time. You can come in the morning, and the coming song that you're going to be singing here is about our garden. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dave. What a blessing to be able to enjoy the fruits of, of God's provision and His reign. Everybody's talking, so I got a real quick joy. <laughs> Family got together last night, and uh, this is our birthday week. My oldest son, Ted, turned 32. My sister turned 54. And my dad turned 80 this week. And we had a, uh, okay. my mom and dad's 59th anniversary was this week. So a big week for us. Okay. Had a good time. Does anyone else have anything they want to share this morning? Okay. Let's lift these up in prayer to the Lord. We'll have a time of silent prayer together as we, we have this song played. And then we'll pray together and then we'll do the Lord's Prayer. And I won't forget it this week, I promise. <laughs> God, we have a lot to be thankful for. We also have a lot that we need to entrust to you. This morning as we gather, there are heavy burdens on many of our hearts for dear loved ones and neighbors. I thank you for these dear brothers and sisters and for the kind and compassionate hearts that they have, the willingness that they have to come here together every week and to share joys and concerns with one another and in your presence. God, let us always be a people that believe in prayer. May you find us always open to receive word from you and to offer praise and to offer those things that are heavy on our hearts. Together we want to lift up everyone in our connected to our family here and in our community who needs a special healing touch from you, Lord, this week. And who needs to know your presence? Who needs to feel your spirit? 
God, and if you would speak directly to them, that would be amazing. And if you would use us as your mouthpiece to speak peace into their lives, then let us be willing and available. Pray for everyone that needs surgeries in our community and for those that were shared today. For Sheila and for Joyce. For Diana on Friday. And for all of the others that we know are listed in our prayer concerns list and for all of those that we know of in our, in our lives, our friends and neighbors and our families. God, we also know that you are present in tragedy. And we pray for this family of Ashton. And that you would speak a special word of loving kindness to their hearts. And we pray for Randy's family as they're still mourning. And also that you would provide safe travel to them, Lord. God, we thank you also for the praises. We thank you for birthdays and for anniversaries. We thank you for the joy of rain and how you've provided with your beautiful creation. We thank you for cancer and remission. And we thank you for miraculous healing. Because we know and we believe and we declare that it still exists and that you are still working in this world. You aren't done yet. You're not done with us and you're not done with your world. God, we lift all of these things up to you because sometimes we can't carry the burdens alone. Help us to be able to share them with one another and to share them with you. Because you promise us that your yoke is light. It is easy. And in you we may always find rest. Now we pray together as the Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have the time has come for the offering. If we truly have an opportunity today and every day to decide whether or not we're going to trust the Lord with everything He has given us and with all the things that we think that we can't handle on our own. offerings to you. 
And we pray that they would be acceptable in your sight, that you would know that your children trust you with everything, including our finances. And if you'll join me together. Loving God, our world is so full of hate and hurt, we truly want to see your kingdom of peace and justice come. Help us to be faithful because you are faithful. Help us to be righteous because you are righteous. Help us to take the grace you have offered us and offer it to the world. Thank you for allowing us to join you in healing the world and building your kingdom. May our gifts be a reflection of our devotion to you and service to the world. Amen. The first reading is from the old familiar Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Even though I, he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the second reading, if you'll rise for this gospel, <clears throat> is from Mark 6, verses 30 to 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him that they had all done what they had all done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many people who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. May the Lord bless the hearing and the reading of the word. You may be seated. We are in a five-week series on the Psalms entitled Kingdom Forever, looking at several different aspects of God's everlasting kingdom. Remember from last week, we are living in a time when a new king has come, but his new kingdom has not fully spread across the earth. This new king is Jesus Christ, and his kingdom is one better than that which the world has ever seen. We live in a time between the inauguration and the realization of the kingdom of God. We live in the already and the not yet. We live between the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. We live between the crowning of our king and the full reign of our king. Big picture, what we're talking about is Jesus' forever kingdom and we're using the Psalms to do it. Last week we looked at Psalm 85, a beautiful portrait of God's vision for his coming kingdom we highlighted four divine salvation powers, steadfast love, faithfulness, righteousness, and peace, which are also attributes we see in Jesus Christ. Then we talked about partnering with God in bringing His dream for His creation to fruition. What might it look like 
for these four divine attributes, steadfast love, faithfulness, righteousness, and peace, to turn them into life practices. How might our faith be changed? How might our dreams be changed? And how might our community and our world be changed? Well, today we continue our look through the Psalms at God's forever kingdom. The text today is Psalm 23, the best known and perhaps most loved Psalm in Scripture. Hopefully you remember last week I said there are different types of Psalms. Psalm 23 is a Psalm of praise. More specifically, it's what we call a trust Psalm. A Psalm of trust seeks to nurture faith and trust within God's community. These Psalms declare that God is trustworthy because his record is proof. The 23rd Psalm is well known to us. We probably all know it well. It's probably also well loved by us, which means it is familiar. And because it is familiar, it presents us with a particular challenge. And the challenge is this. How do we hear something that is familiar with an open heart and an open mind? How do we hear from God something fresh from something familiar? There is a danger in repeating this psalm as we often do in prayers and in songs for it to lose its power. The 23rd Psalm is often used in times of grief for the purpose of comfort. And this is a right place for Psalm 23. However, I hope today to show there is a richness to this psalm that goes well beyond how we often use it. The first thing that we need to do is we need to look at the background of where this psalm comes from. All accounts seem to indicate that this psalm was written by David, the second king of Israel. David wrote many of the psalms, by the way, but he did not write them all. Knowing that David wrote a psalm which speaks of God as a shepherd is not surprising, for David was a shepherd. Knowing that David wrote a psalm uh, of trust is not surprising, for David often had to trust in the Lord. Knowing that David wrote a song of abundance is not surprising, for the Lord was often good to David. Knowing that David wrote a psalm so intimate is also not surprising, because David knew God well. What is surprising is that this message communicated through this psalm is, is in spite of the time in which it was composed. You see, all records indicate that this psalm was not written during a calm and happy period in David's life. It wasn't written early when he was a young shepherd boy, before he had the anxieties and worries of running a kingdom as a king. It wasn't written late in his life when he could happily give his throne over to his son Solomon, knowing that the kingdom of God would be well cared for. It was written in the middle of David's life, during one of his most heartbreaking periods. It was written during a time historians refer to as Absalom's rebellion. Now Absalom was one of David's sons, and Absalom led a rebellion against his father David. He wanted his father's throne. You can read about all this in your Bible. It's in 2 Samuel, chapters 13 through 19. I would, I would encourage you to read it sometime this week. But here's the brief rundown, okay? David had several sons. One was named Absalom, and another was named Amon. Absalom and Amon were half-brothers. Now, Amon did something that made Absalom, his half-brother, very angry. He did something inappropriate, which you can read about yourself, with one of their sisters. Absalom pretended to forgive his brother, but really he plotted to kill him. He plotted to kill him for two years, and then he did. After this, Absalom fled the kingdom. He ran away from his father and from the justice. Eventually, years later, he was allowed to return from exile, show his repentance, and be reconciled to his father David. However, Absalom's repentance was insincere. While asking his father for forgiveness, he plotted to take David's throne. Absalom was handsome, he was charismatic, and he was likable. He was young, and the people loved him. And he used that 
to his advantage, his advantage against his father. He won support of the people and he built himself an army. He declared himself king and he rebelled against David. And he caused civil war in the kingdom of Israel. And even despite Absalom's treachery, David, as a compassionate father, still had mercy on his son. David wanted Absalom captured. He wanted him brought to him alive. Well, the story becomes even more tragic because Joab, who was David's friend and lieutenant, against David's orders, killed Absalom. The story tells us that David was waiting back home anxiously for news of his son. He hoped and he prayed and he waited to hear that his son had survived the battle. One messenger came and he didn't have a full enough picture of what had happened. And so David waited and he prayed and he hoped. And another messenger came in the same story. And when the final news came, David wept. And we believe it was in the midst of this time period that David wrote the 23rd Psalm. It was in the midst of this that David saw the Lord as his shepherd, that he believed in his goodness, that he believed in his abundance, and he chose to trust him. David had a relationship with God his entire life, yet David still endured incredible hardship. David's reign as king of Israel was full of war and of grief, and of suffering. If you want pretty without pain, the Bible isn't for you. It's real history. It's not a fairy tale. But then we would ask, how is it that David could write this psalm in this time, and what would he be trying to communicate? Well, let's look at the text again together. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We see that he's declaring that he lacks nothing. He speaks of time, a time after the Exodus, where even in the desert, God provided for his people. He's remembering history. Even in the dark time in David's life, he can declare God's goodness because God has shown up before in the past, in the past of his people and in his personal past. Then he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Sometimes God has to make us lie down because sometimes we don't know what is good for us. Sometimes we may never lie down or sometimes we might not lie down in a brown field rather than a green pasture. He leads us beside, beside still waters and he restores our soul. Notice that David writes restores, not restored. It's ongoing. Renewal isn't a one-time thing. If you need restoration today or tomorrow, tell the Lord, because He is in the business of restoration. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. David had to ask, what path am I on? Am I following God on His path, or am I walking on my own path? Throughout this psalm, we see goodness and abundance affirmed over and over and over. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. It doesn't say that there's no evil, just that we don't have to remain in the grip of evil. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Guidance, instruments of loving guidance, a known constant, God's will, a known authority in a world of chaos. Turn to the Lord if you feel like your life has been turned upside down. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In this time, David's enemy was his own son. And we know that Jesus goes even further, and he invites his enemies to his table, and he turns them into friends, because Jesus is that awesome. Even though the language here is of a shepherd, we are also calling Jesus a king. Because shepherd of people was a royal term in the ancient Near East. Kings and gods were called shepherds of people. You see, it isn't unique that God and Jesus are being affirmed as a shepherd. It's unique that they're being affirmed as a good shepherd. He says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. 
Grace is abundant. A mercy is abundant. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23 is full of divine, divine abundance. God is good. Of that, David is clear. God is portrayed as shepherd and as host. We see God caring for the traveler and for the guest. We see resting in God, refuge, serenity, tranquility, the shalom of the soul, and his hospitality. We see a declared belief in divine abundance in spite of the horrors that David faced. It might be hard to say, I shall not want and truly believe it. Many of us have struggles. Many of us have pain. Many of us have, us have debts. And some of that has been expressed here today before the Lord. Many of us have known what it's like to miss a meal or maybe to be temporarily homeless. And all of us have probably wished for things we wanted or wished things that we thought we needed and we did not receive. I heard once, God is not a cosmic vending machine. He doesn't just let us press a button and then drop from heaven whatever we've asked for. But as this psalm states, he is a good shepherd and he does care for his sheep. God may not give you everything you want, but he will give everything that he promises. This belief in God's abundance is controversial. The world doesn't believe it. The world doesn't see it. The world doesn't get it because they don't know what we know. They don't have the hope that we have. Jesus' forever kingdom is good news. Sometimes we forget that the world doesn't know that Jesus' kingdom is good and that Jesus' kingdom is coming. But we know about grace. And because we know about grace, we can hope. And because we can hope, we can see the divine abundance. But kingdom abundance has three enemies. Fear, independence, and lack of imagination. Fear is the first enemy of kingdom abundance. Fear is the fuel of the kingdoms of the world. Do you know what Jesus' Jesus's kingdom runs on? It runs on grace. God's invitation to you is to set aside fear, to let him take your anxieties away, to hand over the keys to your worry wagon. At the root of kingdom abundance is God's goodness. But when you live plagued by fear, you cannot truly believe in the goodness of God. Sheep without a shepherd have a good reason to be afraid. But sheep with a shepherd, especially a good one, can rest easy. It's good to be a sheep. Amen? Independence is the second enemy of kingdom abundance. Independence is the way of the kingdoms of the world. Do you know what the way of Jesus' kingdom is? It's interdependence. Dependence upon God and dependence upon the community. Depend on God. The Father wants His children to depend on Him. The Shepherd wants His sheep to depend on Him. And on Him alone. There is no expectation for being perfect the first go around. There is no pressure to be bigger and smarter and stronger. You don't have to know it all. It doesn't matter what your education or your credentials are. God ultimately doesn't care how many degrees you have or the letters after your name. At the end of the day, there is one thing God wants from us, and it is for us to say that we need him. Short, simple, sweet. Lord, I need you. It's freeing to be a sheep. Amen? Depend on the community. There is a reason that God gave us one another. The brother or sister next to you is a gift from God. Do you think about that? What a blessing it is to not walk alone. It's not a go-it-alone attitude. It's a go-it-together attitude. It's freeing to be a sheep. Amen? Amen? Lack of imagination or poor imagination is the third enemy of kingdom abundance. Lack of imagination is connected to the inability to see God's good gifts. Rather, it is an inability, it's unwillingness to recognize and accept God's good gifts. It is, in a sense, the desire to remain ignorant. 
ignorant of God's good work in the self, ignorant of God's good work in the world, and at the end of the day, ignorant of God himself. Choosing not to let God do the sanctifying work he wants to do inside of you is resistance. Samuel Wells, an author and pastor, points out, it is the sin of the disciples who do not know how to feed the crowd or who are terrified at seeing Jesus coming to them walking on the sea. The sin of lack of imagination is the sin of those who cannot comprehend the abundance of the world into which they are invited. Instead of abundance, they see scarcity. This sin goes all the way back to the garden, to Eve, who could not see the abundance of the garden for the apple she was lacking. Could it be that sometimes we are so focused on what we think we want or what we think we need that we are missing the abundance of what God has provided? Wow. And now I think we're talking about contentment, aren't we? Kingdom abundance has three enemies, fear, independence, and lack of imagination. If we allow our lives to be ruled by these three things, we will miss, always miss, the abundance of the kingdom. With fear, you live in a future that could be rather than the present that is. You become consumed with holding on to what you have rather than preparing yourself to receive what God will give. With independence, you live isolated, apart from the abundance he gives to his church. And with lack of imagination, you pretend that God cannot work miracles. Kingdom abundance has three enemies, but you can choose whether or not they rule in your life. You can choose to believe the lies of the world and to let your life be ruled by fear, or you can choose to walk in the Spirit and to be bold and courageous. You can choose to go your own way, to be independent, to be a self-made man or woman, to rebel against Christ as Absalom rebelled against David and crown yourself king. Or you can choose to be dependent on God, to affirm his right place in your life as king, and to allow him to lead you on to that beautiful green pasture. You can choose to have a lack of imagination, to limit God's influence, to think in narrow either-or patterns, to see only scarcity. Or, you can choose to be a dreamer, as God made you to be, to let Christ renew your mind so that you can become a third-way thinker with spirit-filled creativity, to see a life of abundance given to you by a good shepherd. The choice is yours. You can choose to trust God and ask Him to make good on His promises. Jesus is both the Good Shepherd King and the sacrificial Lamb who reigns on high. The question is, does He reign in my life and does He reign in yours? You may be out of the desert or you may still be in that desert. Either way, this psalm is for you. You may be in that green pasture, or you still may be searching for that green pasture. Either way, this psalm is for you. You may be beside still waters, or you may be beside raging waters. Either way, this psalm is for you. You may have a restored soul, or yours might still be broken. Either way, this psalm is for you. You might find that you're walking on the right path, or you might be walking on the wrong path and know it. Either way, this psalm is for you. You might be at God's table, or you might be hungry and surrounded by enemies. Either way, this psalm is for you. You may be through the valley, or you may be still in that deep, dark valley. Either way, this psalm is for you. Friends, Jesus has come as a shepherd, a good shepherd, who wants to care for you, and as a host who wants to invite you in. Will you, will we, let him care? Will we let him in? God, 
how can we trust in your abundance? Please show us. Friends, the challenge is simply this. Are you going to trust God? Are you going to trust Him when it's easy? Are you going to trust Him when it's difficult? Are you going to trust Him in the valley or only once He's delivered you through it? And if you want to say, yes, God, I trust you, then make this psalm your prayer. Make it your declaration. Jesus, you are my shepherd, and in you I shall not want. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The praise team will come forward. We'll sing our closing song together. And the song is How Great Thou Art. It is an opportunity to declare God's goodness and declare our trust in Him. Let's sing it together. sings my song, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my song, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God is Son not sparing, Send him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my song, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my song, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. When Christ, when Christ 
days shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my song my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art friends I know as we talk about this psalm and we read this psalm that some of us are saying I'm in that deep, dark valley right now. How can I truly declare God's goodness? How can I truly trust Him? And hopefully, you heard the message today that it is because He has come through in the past. God's record is proof, and we must turn to Him over and over again, declaring His goodness, even in the times where it seems impossible and His Spirit will empower us to do it. So I pray as you go forward today, out into the world, into your community, into your family, the places where you live, work, and play, that you would trust God and you would declare His goodness to the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in God's peace. Amen. Amen.